Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Today's video, we're going to be talking about Shein and basically trying to figure out how long they can last. I know that the perception of Shein is that they're doing really well right now. They have something like 80 million active users worldwide and they've had a lot of growth in recent years. They've literally shot up every year in terms of how many orders they're sending out, but they are struggling right now for a number of reasons. And they've recently made some business decisions that seem a little bit panicked to me. So I wanna get into all of that so you guys can understand what the issues are they're facing right now and hopefully how they're gonna be defeated. Cause as you know, if you watch this channel, I am a sustainable fashion girly and Shein are the antithesis of that. So like I said, Shein could be seen as quite successful. They have a lot of monthly viewers. They have a lot of orders. If you go purely off of social media and TikTok in particular, then Shein is like the darling of TikTok. Everyone's doing hauls and stuff, but there's a lot of issues going on behind the scenes and a lot of pressure from all different sides. Let's go into some of the issues they're facing. So firstly, let's talk about the incoming legislation that's threatening them. If you don't know, Shein tried to list an IPO in the New York Stock Exchange for the past two years, but they found that US lawmakers were asking too many questions about their supply chain that they couldn't answer. And now it's come out that the US are looking into new legislation which promotes nearshoring and promotes local businesses over overseas businesses. And this is a trend that's happening kind of globally. I covered the France five euro tax that's being contemplated right now in another video. And there's a lot of legislation being considered besides that, which Xi'an will find itself caught in the crosshairs of. It's something they definitely have to worry about. Like say, if legislation comes out where they have to prove that they're monitoring supply chains and prove who their suppliers are and stuff, Xi'an's supply chain is so vast and they cannot be monitoring every single supplier in that chain so they're going to come up against a lot of issues if something like this comes into law likewise their whole business model is based on overproduction which is another thing that legislation is trying to tackle they produce so much waste in comparison to other fast fashion companies and they will come up really short if this comes into legislation and they have to tackle their overproduction they would have to restructure the whole business, basically. The other political issue they're having is down to the way they ship their items to the consumer. Because Shein ships their packages straight to consumer, rather than bulk shipping a lot of packages in one shipment and then distributing them locally, like a lot of other companies do, they fall beneath the tax import threshold nearly every time which means that that money is not going to the government and that means the government is very angry and looking for a way to stop this which is you know arguably one of the reasons why the us is going after Shein and trying to promote nearshoring instead. Because Shein's parcels almost always don't meet the VAT requirements, there's also the issue that we don't get any data about their imports because they're not always logged. So for example, if the UK were trying to create legislation around textile waste, for instance, they wouldn't have the data from Shein's imports and consumption in the UK. So they couldn't take that data into account when making any laws. That's an issue and maybe this coupled with the lack of taxation payments is why a lot of countries are coming after Shein more so than other fast fashion companies like Zara. Kind of moving away from politics now, they have a lot of competition from other brands. Not only ultra fast fashion brands like Temu, which actually surpassed Shein last year, despite being a much younger company, but also fast fashion brands like H&M are trying to change their business models to deliver clothes a lot quicker and get to consumers a lot quicker to basically compete with Shein. Now, I know I mentioned Shein's business model earlier, but what's interesting is it kind of works against them. Obviously, Shein rose to the height it has by offering really low prices on products and offering a lot of different products at these low prices. But the prices are so low that it's been reported that Temu, their direct competitor, loses around $6 per every sale. 
just because the prices are so low. I'm not sure how long these ultra fast fashion giants can continue to lose money in this way. So Xien's downfall may just be from its own pricing strategy. The final issue I think they're having is their really poor reputation. Like I said on TikTok, they seem to be like the fashion darlings, but outside of that, there is mounting concern about their overproduction issues and mounting calls for something to be done about them. There's been numerous campaigns, consumer driven challenges popping up like no more polyester in which you basically couldn't shop at Shein if you're doing that kind of challenge. They've also been in the press for a number of issues last year, which introduced them to a wider circle of consumers in the worst way possible. For example, that influencer trip made in the summer made my list of the worst greenwashing moments of 2023 because of how bad it was for the brand and how it sparked a real conversation amongst people that weren't really talking about sustainable fashion as to how bad this company is and how badly they were trying to greenwash people. So all of this means that Xi'an is kind of feeling the pressure, I believe, and that's caused them to make some really weird business decisions. And I think these are gonna show what they're hoping to do in the future. So I think it's important we talk about them. One of the things they're doing is trying to distance themselves from their Chinese background whether this is because of political issues with the US or whether it's just because they want to move their factories closer to the consumers they're going after, which is mostly Western consumers. It basically means they're trying to move their manufacturing hubs to countries outside of China. So they've built new supply chains in Mexico, the US, Europe and Brazil. They've made a HQ in Ireland, which had quite a lot of backlash. They're trying to list on the UK stock exchange now that they can't do the US. They're really trying to put roots globally so they can't be shook if say the US and China situation completely falls through. The really interesting new move they've just taken revolves around India. So if you don't know, the Xi'an app was banned in India from 2000 to 2023, I believe. But basically a new deal has now been reached this year, which means that Xi'an is going to be available to India's population. This is a massive market for them, as you can imagine. But the way the Indian government has orchestrated this is really interesting. Basically, Shen garments sold in India have to be manufactured in India in partnership with a manufacturing company there called Reliance. And another stipulation was that Xi'an will only receive part of the profits from this venture. It means that Xi'an not only gets access to a bigger market and only a percentage of those profits to be fair, but they also get access to India as a global supply chain hub, which is what they're hoping for. I don't think this is a viable thing for every country, to be honest. India has a very well-established garment hub, especially compared to say the UK, where our garment hub is very small and failing after the disasters of Boohoo and fast fashion, basically. So whether this can be replicated in other countries, I'm not really sure. I don't even know if Xi'an would want it to be replicated in every country, considering they're only gonna be receiving a percentage of the profits. I don't know how this is going to be profitable for them, considering that right now, they're potentially losing up to $6 a sale, like Temu. I don't know how they can justify this. I think this just shows a desperation to move away from Chinese manufacturing. They have made another move, which I think is maybe the wildest of them all. News broke really recently that Xi'an is trying to market its supply chain infrastructure to other companies. So basically Xi'an is trying to capitalize on this fast fashion model I suppose, ultra fast fashion model that they built, which is centered on creating really small batches of a lot of different products, testing them on the market, seeing what consumers buy, and then creating more of the items they do buy and discarding the items they don't. What does it mean for Xi'an first, I guess? It means that they won't have to solely rely on orders from consumers in order to make money. This is obviously good considering they're probably losing money for every sale. And it also means if they have to curb their overproduction thanks to future legislation, it also doesn't matter because again, their profits are not dependent on sales. Now, what does it mean for the market? Honestly, really bad news. 
it will encourage copycat brands. Obviously Temu is already doing the same thing, but it will give basically the blueprint to other companies trying to create a lot of different items in small batches and send them off. This is still really bad, even if it's small batches. Plus it's really awful for supply chain workers who have to create a small amount of loads of different styles. It's literally the worst kind of work for them and they'll definitely be paid pittance for it. I'm really excited to come back to this topic once Xi'an announces about their UK IPO. So if you want to hear my thoughts on that when it happens, make sure you're subscribed and you have notifications turned on. But I hope you like this video. I hope it gave you some insight into Xi'an's thoughts and potential concerns for the future. And I hope you have a lovely day. Thanks for watching. Bye.